Okay, good morning. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to this morning's demo. I'm Julie Skoda, and I'm president of the Transparent Watercolor Society of America. And we're all so excited to have Lori Goldstein Warren here with us this morning. Um, this is some of her work on display over here, too. It's for sale if you're interested. Um, we are recording this morning's uh, demo, so and it'll be up on our YouTube site. So um, if you can like keep the noise down a little bit, but please ask questions while she's painting. She's happy to answer any questions. Um, that's great. And I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Hi everybody. It's nice to be here. Very excited to be here. I'm very honored to be here. Um, for those of you that entered the show or got in the show, amazing work. Even the ones that didn't make it in, there were so many that were amazing that didn't make it in. So trust me, it still happens to me. It still happens to a lot of us. So keep entering. That's my advice. Um, I don't do a big monologue about myself. If you want to read about me, you can go to my website. Hearing me say it is just a little more boring, so it's better to read it. <laughs> um, but I do, I live in West Virginia. I'll tell you a little bit of my personal life. Um, I'm originally from upstate New York, Rochester, and then I moved 25 years ago to West Virginia. Um, I live in a 150-year-old, well, no, it's older than that now, 1850 log cabin, three Civil War. Uh, Ridge Mountain Battlefield, as you can see from the top of our ridge, is right across the mountains, so you can see that from our place. Um, what else? I have a business I run with my husband I'm not going to discuss. It's boring. And um, then I do my art on the side, and I do, I've been doing it ever since our kids were little. We raised our kids together, and um, that's about it. I've been painting for 25 years now because I moved out in the country and there was nothing else to do <laughs> that was legal anyway or that I was interested in. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not a gardener, I'm not a canner. All my friends out there are, and they give us beautiful Christmas baskets, and that's all I need. <laughs> so I don't have to learn to do that. Um, today I'm going to be doing a glass uh, painting for you because Michael and I both do portraits, we both do landscapes, so I figured this would be something different um, that he wouldn't have to worry about what he chose. So here is the photograph, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit. Um, glass pieces, um, like this one over here, always try to find something that's dynamic instead of just stacking a couple bottles together. and. Do something like this with the light that's dynamic that draws the colors down and gives it a diagonal composition. Or that one over there, put stained glass behind your glass and do layers of glass and it's sitting on glass so there's reflections. It just makes your paintings a little more interesting and dynamic instead of just a still light, you know, like a typical still light. So anyway, we'll get going on this now. I'm done talking. And I do my thing in stages so you can see everything I do. So all I did was I masked um, with PBO drawing gum is what I use, just on the inside, like a half inch or so of the objects. Okay, and my reference photo over here. <clears throat> you'll see me use these two, and this is just something I've been doing forever, and it works really well, and you'll see me use them during the thing. Is I just take paper towels and I rip them up into little cubes like this, and I keep them always handy. And if you get a puddle going, I know a lot of people tend to do this push, 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 and then you get all these blotches in your paint. If you take one of these ruffled edges that you tore and just lay it in there, when you see the paint stop moving, then you lift it off and the puddle's gone and you didn't disrupt your paint. So you just put the edge of it in, let it drink it up, and then take it off. So you'll see me doing that probably because this is going to be a wet painting. So. All right, here we go. I'm going to start first with the darks. Uh, of course, and you always know I paint dark to light, is anybody wondering? So I'm going to go into my, this is my lamp black. <clears throat> I do mix my darks too, but for this, I just wanted it pretty much just my black and blue, and I'm going to put a few color accents in at the end. So I'm really pulling some paint so it's nice and heavy and thick. And this is on dry paper. I'm just going to start it. black? Why black? Because I want to see how dark this is. I want it to be nice, nice and dark up in this corner. So the blues are very dark also. So I almost need to go to black to get the darkness. Go right in here to my. But this is why I mask a half inch in on my objects so I can move quicker. <clears throat> okay. So when that's nice and wet, then I'm going to take my smaller round brush. 
and I just I put water on it, I just pull it off with my fingers very lightly, I'm not squeezing it, and then just soften my edge. A few spots of this. And it's le if it leaves little blossoms and everything, I don't mind that in a shadow or something or in darkness. It kind of just adds a little, little texture to the to the dark. So let me just soften your edge and let that set. And now I'm going to move down into my blue. This is going to stay white for now, but on my next pass, I'm going to darken this up with a little gray. So rinse off all that. Go into my this is um, ultramarine. And there's a little lamp black that comes right down from the edge of this circular oh. crystal. What was that? Oh, it was yeah. duct tape. The, the tape, tape gave way and your, your mirror turned sideways. Uh -huh. I can still watch over there for now. <laughs> so I'm, gonna follow I'm very accident prone, so when everybody goes, ooh, I think I'm going to die. <laughs> Something's going to happen. We don't want to take it to my head. Yeah, that would be really bad. I have enough problems up there already. <laughs> this is a very high tech operation. <laughs> you know, we sell duct tape, Julie. I could get you some. That'd be great, yeah. Okay. That's the last one. So I just have that black pass and I saw the edge of that again. Okay, it's not, so it's not right now I'm going to my blue that I already pulled out here. It needs to be adjusted. You think it works. So there's just this one little circle of light that I'm going to leave in there. It's the light coming through that. When you get a chance, could you lay your paper towel roll down? Oh, I'm sorry. Tell me when it's right. Adjust it. No, it needs to go down. No, right? Oh, yeah. If anyone wants to take photographs during this, that's fine. I do not mind. You can photograph my artwork if you like. Yeah, no, yeah. This has to come this way. That has to come front. There. Yay. Not my banner. Yeah, well, I'm not going to stay. You could there. stay there. Okay. <laughs> my banner. I think your arm might get tired. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption, Lori. It's okay. I'm just, I have to keep moving a little bit just so it doesn't dry here. She's going to get some more tape. What do you like about it? Not everybody's going to see it, so. Too much now. Too much. Yeah, that's what I was having to say. Problem because the tape's not long enough. Yeah, the tape's worn out. We worn it out. She's gonna get some more, I think. So it's Michael's fault. It is. Always blame the man who's in the room. Duct tape. What a miracle. <laughs> oh, there we go. One, two. Okay. Where, where's good? Is that good? Yeah. Most of you are happy. But not everybody's going to be happy. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm sure. I stopped my edge. I'm okay for now. <laughs> That doesn't come off. What weight paper do you use? Oh, okay. It's a good time to talk about that. I use a, um, a Fabriano Artistico 140 cold press. And you don't tape it down. I don't. Oh, yeah. I'm going to talk about that. If you're here to see an immaculate palette <laughs> and someone who tortures their paper before they paint, like, you know, soaking it, stretching it, stapling it, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> I told everybody that my, my last book in my art career is going to be called The Lazy Artist. And it's going to be all my tips and tricks for being a lazy artist. I, I never change water until the end of a painting, even a cityscape or something. I like to have that gray kind of, because I'm very colorful oriented, so it's good to gray it down a little bit with something. Okay, so all I did was I continued with the blue, um, the ultramarine, I softened the edge. Now I'm going to keep going with this lighter gray that is under this bottle. Okay, brown brush. Now the black over here is, um, you can see, is still 
fairly strong, but I'm just going to add a little water to it. I don't want the black and the cloud to be quite so strong. A little stronger than that. So, and I'm just going to paint around really quickly. It doesn't have to be perfect, but around these little crystal spots, because I'm going to actually scrub some of those soften the edges and scrub them a little bit at the end anyway. So. And my paintings go through about six stages of really, really ugly <laughs> before even I start to want to adopt them. So, yeah, don't ever, I tell my students this all the time, don't ever, ever throw out a painting that you haven't finished. Because even if it ends up being ugly at the end, you learn something trying to fix it. Right? Yeah, that's important. <laughs> None of us started out like um, Rembrandt, and I'm still not there. Okay, now we have these hard white things. So again, I'm going to go in, grab my brush, soften some edges. Let's get rid of that little. And you can do this scrubbing afterwards, and I will be scrubbing some of this also, but it's a lot easier if. Um, if you have a softer edge to begin with, you don't have to scrub quite so hard or so much. And I only scrub, that's what I love about Fabriano. I was going to say, um, is you only have to scrub with a soft brush. You don't have to use any of those scrubbers or acrylic brushes. Okay, now we're going to, this has had a minute to set anyway, so I'm going to just soften that edge. Okay, so that's it for my first pass on this, okay? It's just getting the colors down, getting the values somewhat dark. I mean, they're definitely not as dark as what I'm going to want at the end, but that would be my first step, and this is when I would leave my studio and get away from it. Let it dry, and then come back and keep working on it, so we'll go to step two out of the oven here. Okay, let me play that. Is that your way there? Is no, that okay? So here this is when it dries. Notice much lighter, of course. But you can see the soft edges and everything and you know how this works. It just kind of gives you this nice fuzzy look at the end. But we need to go darker. Obviously this is not this. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing, starting at the beginning. My big flat. What kind of masking do you use? PBO. Yeah. I really like it because it goes on smooth just like paint. You know, and it, um, and the, if people are like, doesn't that blue gray color bother you? I'm like, no. <laughs> no Shows up. Yeah, I can see where it is. <clears throat> I'm more, I mean, I love color, but I consider myself more of a value painter, which I have learned over the years to become because, oops, my face, because um, my paintings were very colorful, but they lacked any kind of punch. And I took a class from somebody in here, I think it was Mr. Salmonen, <laughs> and he taught me about how you have to have, every paint should have at least some of every part of the value scale in it. So it should have a little, one, you know, some ones, some twos, threes, fours, all the way up. And I was missing, I was getting, I'm like, and that's why I started painting also, which I credit him for, painting dark to light, because it's a lot less scary getting your darks on first, that's what we're all afraid of when we're beginning painting is we're so scared we're like oh i've done this beautiful piece now and now i gotta punch in some darks where how much how dark you get them on there first and then you can play in the middle you got the white paper you got the dark and now you can just play in the middle section which we all love anyway that's where we all thrive <clears throat> and i had a problem with that too very much okay so fuzzy there so we're going to go into the blue. Now this time I'm going to do this a little different. I put the black in first and then the blue. But this time I'm going to put on the second pass, I do the blue first so the black will show up a little better. See how it kind of almost disappeared under the egg. Soften. Okay, 
I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and then I'm gonna run some more gray in there, but I don't want the blue to go all the way over there, so I'm gonna wait a little bit on that. Yeah, soft, soft. Now into our little bottle. And now you can see, um, I went light the first time, but see it still needs a little more punch. Still a little too um, faded. Black. But see, like a lot of people would take out a brush like this to do this kind of work. This is what you should be using. It'll hold a lot more paint, you can keep moving faster, and as long as it has a good point, you can get into all these little spaces. But if you're using that tiny little, almost hairless brush, almost hairless. yeah, <laughs> like the hairless dogs or cats. But um, yeah, you're just, you're gonna be sitting there forever trying to get all this, that, like what I just did there would take you maybe 10 minutes, not a minute, you know? So, and, and then if you're not gonna have the soft edge that you can, soften, or this um, wet edge that you can soften. Okay, let's soften that one more time. There we go. Okay, so now we're just gonna bring that down again. Hopefully by then we can go over there. Right. Okay. Start at the bottom, start down. Okay. So now we got a little more drama going on. This painting is not about the bottles as much as it's about the uh, color that it's rolling. Okay, here's one of those puddles I was telling you about. It's right here at the bottom. So see if you just set that on there. You can see it traveling up. Make sure it's on there. See it traveling up and it's still moving. So you just watch, watch, watch. Then you take it off and the puddle's gone. It's not gonna gather back up there again. So always just, I call them my little wicks, you know, and they just help wick up the, the paint. Okay. So there is step two. I'm gonna throw this. <clears throat> Do I, is it okay if I throw these on the floor? Sure. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. It's a lot easier. That's what I do at home. Okay, so here we are with our dark, now dramatic background, softened and everything. Okay. Oh, I didn't go into the gray again on that, but you can see what it does. I just go gray. It just makes it a little darker right there. So now I have my masking off, and I'm going to start on my bottles. Okay, I'm going into my black first, and this is for this. If you look, there's a very, very, very dark center of the base and the base, and then it goes up to the side. So we're gonna do that first. And as you can tell, I got a little sunburn yesterday. Wow. Yeah. We were sitting waiting for our rooms. Got scorched outside. Well, Dory didn't, I did. Okay. And then this comes down. She was freezing, so she had like long sleeves on there. I never am freezing, so of course I'm in my short sleeves. I paid for it. Now I'm not going to soften this because I'm going to go right in with the blue. This time I want the blue and the um, black to kind of co mingle because it's a bit of piece of glass. Is this freaking you out, Lana, that I'm using big brushes? <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I have been giving demos and forgot to turn my phone off before. That's embarrassing. You're interrupting yourself. Okay, so I just left out this light little um, reflection that's in the glass right here. And I'll paint that on the next pass through that glass piece. Okay, so. Let's do, but this is how I paint everything. Uh, my best brushes are 
these three Escoda brushes, which are all very large. This is my smallest one. And it's not that small, it's, I don't know what the size is. I always rub all the paint off. But I'm guessing it's like probably six. That's the smallest one. Okay, I'm gonna start working on the little egg over here. And all I'm doing now is just plugging in my dark. So these are all like, you'll see, they're little triangles, little wedge shapes. And again, I'm not using a tiny brush. I want to do a bunch of them at once, not one at a time. So I'm just going around looking for my darks in my picture. If I miss some, who cares? If I color one that it's supposed to be white, who cares? Nobody's going to know this piece, unless they see your photograph and they study it. Nobody's going to know. So I'd rather see people move a little faster than nitpick over tiny, tiny, tiny things that don't matter. It's like hair. People sit there and they try and get every strand of hair just right. I'm like, who's going to know? And I only have so many hours a day to paint, so I don't like lollygagging. <laughs> okay. okay. So now I'm a, there's also some dark blue that's going to go in the top of that, but I need to let that go first because I'm pretty sure I didn't do that. I already did that on this one. No, I didn't. Okay, never mind. We'll have to wait for it to dry. I really planned ahead this time, <laughs> more than I even remember. Okay, now we're gonna, I, and I'm working this way, of course, you all know if you're left-handed, you'd be working that way, I'm right-handed, so I'm working this way, just because I do tend to put my elbows into my paint a lot. Again, it's probably the hurrying thing. I'm just looking for areas where there's little dark triangles and things. I'm not looking for the exact spots. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't matter. Like if I color in the wrong one, then I leave these two white when I do my masking for the final. But yeah, it don't, I hate to see people stress over painting. And I see it in workshops sometimes. And it's like, don't do that. You're, you're ruining what it's supposed to be about. <laughs> it's supposed to be about fun and expressing yourself. And usually their paintings don't turn out because they, you can see it. You can see the stress in the painting. They didn't enjoy it. Okay. Over here. Just looking around. Getting the general area where they are. Here's a big one. And this, especially this cut crystal kind of intimidates um, people, but like I said, you don't have to worry about getting any detail perfectly right, for one. And secondly, um, it's really not that hard. All it is is it's dark darks, light lights, and then you put some, you know, I'm going to see I'll do a wash that kind of gives the glass weight. And then you can just plug in some little colors for fun at the end. It's really not as hard as it looks. Soon's piece upstairs is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. See him worn? You haven't seen the show yet. Go take a peek. Okay. There we go. All right, so that's about it for that phase. I'm going to scoop this over there. Okay. There we go. So there it is with the darks. And I did put some more darks into the base of that, which I forgot. They're just little lines spread at the base. But there's no, and I have now masked off my whites. You can see the gray. And that's just for the sparkle, okay? So, yeah. 
little bit of sparkle. Now I'm going to go in and put my blue as my bow. Who's that? <laughs> What's that? Sounds like a phone. phone. Oh, that was a phone? Really? I thought somebody was saying something. Okay, I'm just putting in my blue. Now keep in mind my darks by going to that. This is what I love about painting dark to light. If I go into there with my blue, it doesn't matter. It's dark already. It's already black. And I've already masked my white, so that makes it me freer to move around and put in my dark blue. My ultramarine. I rarely mask after a painting has begun, except when I do cut crystal. It's the only time. Because I need to preserve that sparkle, and I tend to paint over them too many times. You know, and if you lose all the sparkle, then it definitely isn't going to look like glass. Susan Stoller up here and I and Anne Hightower Harrison, we did an article on glass. We made a while back. For who? Watercolor Artist magazine. That was fun. We basically what we did was we all picked from our collections because we all had glass collections. And we shipped the whole box to each other. And we picked out, we all picked, didn't talk, picked out our own pieces, did our own paintings. And we did the article, it was fun. Okay, so there's the blue, and I'm going to put a little bit down here just because it makes sense. There would be blue at the bottom of this too, there's just hardly any, so just pick a couple places and put it in there. Okay. Now we're going to go over this glass face again up here. This is what I like about a butcher tray. So if you want to scoop this up, if you want to pull out color, you can really pull out color. If you've got the little tiny squares, especially with the little pea-sized thing of paint in them, you're not going to be able to pull color like that with a big brush. And there's one more little sliver down here on the side that's actually gray. It's not blue, so I'm going to leave that. So there are a couple swoops, you got that whole thing done. Now I'm going into the darks in the base, the next darker darks. Blue in here. Um, now when I want to start with black and I want to bring a little blue in, because this is all very wet, in fact, there's a puddle, let's get rid of that. Um, if I get, if I soften between them, then the blue will kind of fade into the, the black and give you a little bit of like blue gray, which is nice. So anyway, I start with my dark away from the blue and then just bring it closer until they blend together like that. So that way it doesn't just run the blue right in there and turn it blue. This way they're both still there, the black and the blue, or the gray and the blue. Okay. Let's see. Let's get dark here. That's gray. All right. And then I'm going to pick up some water and soften that so it's not all solid. Makes it look round, you know, because the falls on the base of this um, base are round. So just put a little water in the middle and then look around. So how long has everybody been painting here? Anybody want to talk? We're all sitting quiet. You get sick of me talking. Okay. And again, down here there's little light little tiny lights that are right there in the base of this. I don't care where they are or what they look like. I'm just going to go in there and just tap in some dark and leave a couple of little light spots. That's all you got to worry about. doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and then we got some gray going in here. All the way down to the base. 
and we'll just drop a little water in there and soften that. Okay, I'm just, um, this is just a more watery version of my black, and I'm just going to put in some kind of middle tones in this piece. I mean, it looks the same, so of course we know if it goes down and looks the same as the dry paint, it'll dry lighter. Or if you want to be sure, you can go over your dark skin like that. It'll definitely pop dark. That's another thing I like about painting dark to light is the values kind of take care of themselves. Because, um, like, let's say when I'm doing, um, like, a portrait, like under Jessica's eyes, if I do the first, the darkest that's right under her eyelash line, and I let that dry, and then I do another wash of gray beyond that, including but beyond that, then, of course, that one right under her eye is going to pop back a little darker. So it really controls your values for you if you're having trouble with values. Oops, some people don't. Again, that was me. There we go. And I'll just go a little dark down here. Add some middle darks. And I'll get a little blue. As we get closer to this face, there's going to be a little blue reflecting in it. I'm just looking for little dark shapes. So it's now I have blue on here, so it's a good time to do that. And I'm going to go a little darker, a little bit further down, I should say. I'm going to start here. So this, this is still damp, even after all that. This is still damp over here, so I can just tap in some blue. I don't have to really paint again or go around things and just tap it in. And that way it gives it some lighter blue and darker blue up there instead of being solid. So I'm liking that. Okay, we can work on these shadows down below here. Below this heavy base. There's a dark right there. But I, I prepare like this because I'm not, I'm like um, Michael, I'm not a plein air artist. I don't think I could even do it. I don't know. I mean, I've tried it. It's okay, but it's definitely, I don't put that the caliber of work that I'm happy with. But anyway, you can turn on a painting in an hour or two. I need this. If you want to see everything I do, I need to do it this way. Okay. Um, looks good. Okay. So there's that one. Oh, I got to do the dry. I almost forgot. Okay. So make sure this brush is pretty dry. I just pick up a little bit of the lighter gray and then just go right along there. Just so that's not pure white anymore. Okay, so there's that step. There we go. And oof. we're coming in. These are the last two. Oh! Now I did one more thing on this one. To see, wasn't well, paying attention. <laughs> on these, okay. That one is going to have to dry a little, so we're going to talk for a minute. Can we use a hair dryer? Um, is there one here? I usually don't use one, but <coughs> just dabbing up any little puddles so it will dry quicker. This is the part where I do the gray wash to give it weight. I'm just going to pat some of these and not glue too much. Yeah. It's leaving the color, so that's good. Okay. So I'll show you on this one, because this one has hardly any paint on it. This is going to be a hot mess if I do it, I think, but we'll try. Okay, so I'm going to go into just what's in my palette. So it's all that's in there is blue and gray, or blue and black. So I'm just going to go into that middle where it's all mixed together, have a mode or whatever you call it. Okay, and then I'm, now I'm gonna give the glass weight. And again, my, if I go over my darks, that's fine, they'll pop back darker. Anything that's masked will be white, so I can just do this nice. Maybe I 
opens up into the neck. I did this demo a while ago and I forgot what it was. And again, I'm just going to soften the edge down here with the dark stuff I did. Too much up there. And then right around the bottom, I was going to try to put a little of this, what I call my weight, my weight gray, weighted gray. We'll try it over here. We'll see if we turn this into a hot mess or not. There's a lot of a lot of the in fact everything that I haven't masked already painted gets this gray treatment over here. Okay. I'm just gonna go gentle towards the blue. <laughs> we'll get too crazy here. Did you collect glass before you started painting it? Did I what? Collect glass pieces before you started painting it? Nope. I just liked painting it and I started buying it. Yeah, I, I, I do love it now. Now I probably will be collecting it I already have. But I'm having a big yard sale when I get home. And some of my glass that I don't get anymore is going up on the block. <laughs> starting to take over like my paintings. The yeah, our insurance company stopped Ensuring my paintings was problematic because the, you know, in the house, if the house burns, you've heard of that happening to artists. The house burns down, and they lose their life's work. But yeah, they wouldn't insure anymore. So I bought a for eight hundred was eight hundred dollars. I bought a FedEx truck, an old box FedEx truck, and the guy that works for us is turning it into an outside gallery. Oh, an cool. <laughs> outside gallery. Yeah, and uh, we, he already painted the outside of it and everything, and my daughter and I are going to do a mural on the outside. Cool. How big is it? It's like the big box trucks you see going down the road. Neighborhood. Neighborhoods, yeah. And he took the engine. Well, that's the other thing. We paid 800 He took the engine and transmission out of it. We sold that for 1000 <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, well, there you go. <coughs> but we have to pay Paul, too, to do all the work. He's our, our resident craftsman. Okay, I'm just going to soften these edges in here. This is just dirty water. It's no paint. It's just that gray water. Just to soften some of these little edges in here. That's gray. Yeah, I don't know. My husband came up with that idea. We saw the box truck for sale in the local, you know, trader paper. Okay, so there we go. Now we got that done. The weight is in there. Boom. Last one. Oh no, second the last one. Okay, so there's there's that dry. Okay, and now I'm just going to go around and start um, putting in some colors, some accents, taking off the masking. It's always fun part. Which I'll do that first before I get anything wet. Um, but yeah, I think it's because my house, I mean, keep in mind, it's an 1850 log cabin, not a, no storage, zero, zero storage. So I have paintings stacked all over the house. Okay. Still feels some. There's with the masking off, so I have some twinkle. And now I'm just going to get, this is the only time I go to my smaller brushes, only because I don't want to make a mess, but I go to this little one. It's just a, probably a one, it is. 
just to throw in some colors. Now I'm going to go into my limited palette of twin gold. This a little. There goes the black. Remember, on the blue. Okay. So I'm going to go into my twin gold, my twin rose. Do the bigger brush to at least do this. Okay. Now I've already been using all the marine through all of this. So I'm going to go into my um, bellow turquoise, just so it's a different blue. So it's not, doesn't, you know, just fade into the other blue. So now you just kind of pick and choose where you want to throw some color, just like little gems of color. And this is not, you don't even need this for that. It, it, there's nothing in there that has these colors, but it keeps it from being kind of like a monotone, boring. And Dory told me about this, actually. We were talking while I was working on this. She goes, you should pop in some of your colors. I'm like, OK. Good idea, and I liked it. We've been painting together for 25 years. You get to know each other real well, <laughs> what your strengths and weaknesses are. All right, so I'm just kind of dotting around with my gold, having fun putting it in little places. <clears throat> These are all like the little shapes that I, must, I haven't done anything with yet. Um, You'll see some pencil ones like that that are under the gray, do those, and then do, you can cover a couple white spots. The twinkle, just don't cover them all. <coughs> and a little gold in here. And I also kind of go around some of my um, twinkle lights, like actually maybe give them a little line or even an outline of color. So just, again, just makes it prettier, a little more entertaining than just white, white. And that's why, I, you know, looking at your photo for, you know, especially if you're, you know, can compose a good photo for composition, looking at it for structure of your subject, things like that, that's all fine. But at some point you gotta stop, throw that away and have a little fun, you know, of something that's not in the picture. Like when I teach pouring, we only work from black and white photographs because it will mess with your head when you're pouring. If you're looking at color, because you're gonna be like, that's not where it's going. <laughs> then they start blotting everything, <laughs> and then they have a nice gray look and painting. So um, yeah, at some point, throw your reference photo away near the end and just have some fun. Remember why you started painting to begin with? You like color, you like playing. Let's get a little turquoise. For this guy, so there should be more blue up here. Wasn't it you, John, that showed us that photograph of that girl on the swing or something? Didn't Kathy take that one who took it? Was it you that talked about that photograph? John? I don't recall. Remember, it was like, it was like an old time, not old time, I shouldn't say that, but it looked almost like a vintage photo. It was a girl in this huge swing with like a like really long chain. It was in like New York City Brooklyn Bridge or something. Oh, that photograph. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what he said was a great lesson, and thank God, because he made me feel a lot better about myself. He goes, um, if you have a photograph that's so perfect and so beautiful, why paint it? It's already, you've already achieved it, right? And then, and I'm going, thank God, because my photos stink. I am so bad at photography, and I was even worse back then. It made me feel good. And I'm just going to put a little turquoise in this guy. Yeah, I don't ever have to worry about taking a picture so nice it shouldn't be painted, that's for sure. 
not my forte. All right. Now at this point, I'm also going to soften, and this is what I soften with. It's just a flat watercolor brush. Okay, it's soft, very soft. I don't like pulling up fiber. If I have to brush fibers off, what am I doing? That's you're hurting your paper. Again, I don't torture paper. Okay. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is soften the circle. And I don't go around the edge, I go around the whole thing. I want color to come in and the outer color to go out. And then you've got dry and you get a nice soft without the white white. I don't want the white white. Am I on the screen? Okay, good. Then I gotta do that same thing to these guys here. So um, now, these are pointed, so you got to be a little more careful. you got to make sure you maintain the shape. But this is what I love about fabric paper. It's just it's soft and it lifts so nice. Okay. I'm just getting rid of any real sharp edges. I don't care if there's one or two, but I don't want them all to be sharp. One time I was doing a demo down in um, Texas in front of a very nice group, thank God. And I had just put out the first one with the masking, the blank, okay, painting. And we're sitting there, we're talking, and they're asking questions. And all of a sudden, because like I said, I'm clumsy, um, I had the, they gave me this little styrofoam cup full of coffee. And I went to move something, and it knocked onto my painting all down the table, down my white pants. This little cup was like, it was like a bucket of coffee. But where did all this come from? But it was hysterical. We're all just like, I'm like, anywhere I go, this is my life. Okay, I'm just gonna lift a little bit there. Just pat it, get a little more shine. And right now, that's all I'm looking for, is just to maybe like pull out a little of this gray in a place to give a little more dimension if I think it needs it, like right up front there. Oh, line here. And that's why I like using flats to lift because they give you that. You can get a nice line too. Okay, so there's that. That first one should be dry now. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here it is, pretty much finished. Um, but this is the only thing I do at the very end, and again, it's my whole thing about learning to be better about values. So I'm going to go into my heavy, heavy lamp black again, like almost thick. Oh, and here's a good tip too that I should pass along. But if you have, I think it works with any palette, but I know it works with these metal um, butcher trays. Is if you think your paint is thick enough for what you're, let me do this. Speaking of the button, I didn't even use it. Okay, if you're beginning to, um, you know, you're beginning painting, you think, oh, this is thick enough. If if you go, this is quick still. Okay, right there. So that that puddle, if you go like this, see how that fills right back in. It's just like coming in both sides. But if something's really thick, like this black I just pulled out, you know, let me get this brand water into it. Okay. And then you take a brush and go through that. It's running from there down, but see how it stays apart from the sides? So that's a good way if you're not good with consistency. I know this whole cream milk thing, I don't, uh, it's too complicated for me. It's like, you know, is it cream? Is it milk? I don't, I don't know. I don't even cook. Leave me alone. But, um, yeah, but, yeah, this is just, that's a good way to do it right in your palette. Just give a swipe with a semi-dry brush, and if it flows right back together, it's, it's probably a little too loose. If you're going to get fading kind of colors, unless you're looking for a high, you know, tone painting. All right, so, what are we doing? Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm just going with my little brush again. Not that one. Okay. There we go. So into thick, thick, thick black. And all I'm going to do is just punch up where I had some of my blacks, just to give it a little more. I don't want anybody to ever say I'm afraid of values again. <laughs> so. I did an article a while, well, a long time ago now for Watercolors Magazine. It was called Don't Be Afraid of the Darks. <laughs> that was me. 
And I think it's a lot of us. That's a scary thing at the very end. If you're waiting to the end to put in your your dark darks, it is it's scary, it's intimidating. Very hard to get those up again if something goes wrong. And also, when you get this black black back in there, it kind of makes the gray look really pretty again. As long as it's like super dark. And again, this is, I'm not really looking at my reference photo now either. I have my darks on here. I'm looking at my darks and deciding which ones I want to punch up. So that's all I'm doing. And also to break them up. If there's a big long pass that's all the same value, then why not put a darker value right in the middle or you know, to one under the other to break it up a little. Don't want to bore anybody. Now here where I have the blue, it needs to definitely get punched up to bring back those black kind of prism shapes, little squares and whatnot. <clears throat> Yeah, and there it is. All done. Any other questions? Anyone? Can you hold it up? Um, can I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the color's not the best on these screens. There it is. Can you see the back? Um, your brushes have very long handles. Are they synthetic or synthetic? These are mixed. These are Skoda brushes. And this is a synthetic mix. Is that El I'm going to say his name wrong. I'm going to kill his name. Alvaro Castignet or whatever. Yeah. It's his series. I want them in some show. I didn't buy them and I love them. When these wear out, I will buy some. <clears throat> because you like the length? Excuse me? Because you like the length? I do. I have long fingers anyway so i have kind of man hands and i do i like the longer it feels nice in my hand, hand the balance yeah exactly i mean these are okay but look at that in my hand looks like i'm going to do my nails or something so yeah and these if you haven't tried one of these black i don't usually promote other brands and stuff but and my name is not on these or anything else i'm just saying this is a great wash brush the black velvet inch and a half with the long handle it holds a ton I mean, it does. I could do a whole city street with colors and stuff and just like two passes of grabbing paint. I don't have to keep going back because it holds so much. <laughs> yeah, that's my brush. And these I just won to in Georgia, John. <laughs> these are the little pointed rosemary brushes. I got a couple sets of those. And, um, they're not bad. They have a really nice point. They're good if you're doing detail. I just don't use little brushes a lot. It's rare. Yes. Your work is beautiful. Thank I'm you. about the light source and working with glass, how it reflects the mood, reflects the light and all of that. I'm trying to figure that out because I don't, I don't know how that works. Here's, I'll tell you like some ideas that I've done because I was like, all of you know, the first class I did was like straight on, you know, like a, like a still light. Then all of a sudden I realized I have a light pad. I started setting up my glass and my light pads so that were getting underlit. There's so many cool things you can do with glass because it is transparent, it's reflective, refractive. But yeah, um, just try different things. Like this was just done on a piece of white foam core in front of my window. I set down the foam core, I put the pieces on, the light came through the window and I said, good enough, click, click, and there you go. And it's, it's an okay photo, like I said, but that's not my strength, I don't think. But um, yeah, so just try different things and, and layer like that, layer glass behind each other so that some of the, especially if the back one has like dragonflies or something, so they're coming through the clear boring glass, you know, that's just, you know, clear. 
So yeah, you just play around. There's a lot you can do with glass. And you can put, you know, a flower with it, or you could, and I did like one, it's, it's all just animals, like glass animals, the paperweights or whatever, and they're all marching in a line together, and the first one is a pig with wings, so I named it One Pig's Fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a full sheet, and, and you can get those little figurines. These right here, people think this is a huge vase. This vase is this tall. Yeah. And then I have a little egg, this is the egg, but I'm shooting downward. So that's the egg, and then I have this little perfume bottle, which is only that big. It's mm -hmm. tiny. We can make it big in paintings. <laughs> Excellent job. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. I prepped so I can actually show you everything. Like I said, I don't, I've been to demos, and it's fine when you see like half of what they do, but then it makes you want more. You're like, I want to see the whole thing the way you do. So there's that, and you can feel free to, if you want to photograph any of the steps or anything and see them, that's fine too. Do you paint just fast if you're studying Yeah, I don't have a lot of time to paint. I'm running, we're running our business, or I'm running our business. And, yeah, my husband's disabled. I'll take care of him and feed him and all that. Make sure he's in bed. <laughs> bed washed and put up to bed. <laughs> no, he's not that bad. I'm just saying. He's, yeah. <laughs>